Assalamualaikum and welcome. Pakcik Khalid is back. If you want to know the limits of emission of air impurities of pollutants coming from the non-ferrous metal processes such as plants of copper, zinc, lead, cadmium and aluminium, then keep watching this video. All the best. I hope you find what you look for. If we are going to look at part D of the third schedule, which is non-ferrous metal process. The law stipulates lead cadmium. The manufacturing capacity is producing 0.5 tons a day or more. And for other metals other than lead, cadmium, and non-ferrous of other metals, which uh, metals like aluminium, they are non-ferrous, chromium, zinc, nickel, tin, and all this, if they are produced in a quantity equivalent to or more than two tons per day, then they are subscribing to this particular regulation under first schedule of activities and their emission standard will fall under third schedule part D non ferrous metal process. Got it? Now let's recap what we have done so far just in case some of you missed out. If these industries are listed in the first schedule, all the emissions of air impurities are already listed by the law in the third schedule. Right, in this session, we are going to look into this one, non ferrous metal process, which is lead, cadmium and other metals. Let's take a look. I have arranged in this order all the various types of uh, processes related to it, okay? These are all the environmental parameters. They are specific to the nature and type of processes for this particular category. The first parameter, as you could see, is sulfur dioxide. The units used is in milligram per cubic meter. Those parameters that require CEMS, I have given you in the form of rate form. Let's take a look at center plants. All right, so for sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and total particulate matter, synthet plants require CEMS installation. These equipments are quite susceptible to our climate conditions. All right, that is for synthet plants. Now let's take a look at copper and zinc. They are only subscribing to total particulate matter. Build yourself a CMS. The rest of the parameter for copper and zinc production is not applicable. The same thing goes for lead production. Only total particulate matter and CEMS. Primary aluminium from aluminium ingots. Look. Two parameters require CMS. What are they? Sulfur dioxide and total particulate matter. And two other require manual periodic sampling, which is hydrofluoric acid fumes and fluorine. That's all. Secondary aluminium production, the environmental parameter of concern is total particulate matter. And for sulfur dioxide not required for CEMS, they can do this by using the normal isokinetic stack sampling once a year only. What about smelting alloy refining of aluminium? Only total particulate matter and that requires CMS. And smelting alloy refining and other non-ferrous they only require to have a CMS for the continuous measurement of total particulate matter. All right, this is the best I could explain to make it short. Thank you very much. So I hope you are kind enough to subscribe to this video and uh, see you in the next session. Have a good day. I wish everybody blessing from the Almighty Creator and for everyone, my wish to you is Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.